It is finally time to renovate my glaze room. This is a project that I have been wanting to do since we moved into this apartment and it just got delayed because it wasn't a priority. But now I finally have the time to try and make this room a little bit more livable and a little bit more functional. So I need this room to function in a few different ways. First of all, and most importantly, it's going to house my kiln. Secondly, this room really just needs to be a storage room. <laughs> so I need to have a place where I can store my clay. So the most economic way that I source my clay is I actually order larger amounts on pallets to be delivered to my home. There's no ceramic supplier that's based out here in the middle of nowhere, Germany. So I really need to get everything delivered. And the most environmentally sustainable and good for my pocketbook way is to buy lots of clay at one time. So I need to have a place that I can store it. And of course it's not just clay, it's also raw materials. I need to store glazes and plasters and basically anything. So the more storage, the better. And along with storage, I do need some shelves for greenware. So pots that are waiting to go into the kiln. Because this is a firing room and it gets actually pretty warm in here, that makes it a perfect place to dry out my greenware. Also to get finished stuff out of the way from the main working area. But the most exciting and the most like game changing element that I want to add to this room is I want this room to become the glazing room. I mean, this room is not very big, let me tell you that. I've never measured it, but I'm trying to remember. I think it was like maybe 12. Anyway, it's pretty small. So let me show you what I've got in mind. So this room basically is a box. There is a door on one end and a window on the other end. So my kiln is going to go back where it's been this whole time. There's a plug there and it needs to be next to the window for the ventilation. So that whole setup is going to stay exactly the same. And then along this shorter wall, I want to put a big table. So this is going to be where I'm actually doing the glazing. And then underneath the table will be bucket storage. Along the other wall, I'm going to put as many shelves up that I can possibly find. I think that this wall can be completely filled with shelves and what it doesn't get filled with shelves all have clay storage. So it's pretty simple, that's the plan. Let's talk about things I need to do. <laughs> So first step is to deal with the ceiling. Now I know some of y'all are gonna get mad at me, but I am going to paint this ceiling white. So this was already a big conversation when I painted the main room studio ceiling. I do really love the look of the wood. And in fact, we have the same ceiling throughout our entire apartment and I would never dream of painting it. The reason that I'm deciding to paint it down here is because the ceilings are really, really low. So I would like to just for my own mental health kind of lighten up the space as much as possible. But the actual main reason is because of my videos. So I'm going to be filming a lot in this room and I need there to be as much light as possible. Unlike the other room, I only have one tiny little window. And while I will get better lights in here, I need a way to bounce around the light as much as possible so I can make the best quality videos for you guys. The other major deciding factor is that I got floors for the studio for next to nothing. I think I paid 10 euro for the entire floors that I got used. They were ripped up from another apartment and I'm going to lay them in here. The only downside is that they are dark. <laughs> so basically free floors, however, they're dark. So that really made me double down and say, okay, I'm going to paint everything else in this room white. Okay, so yeah white ceiling, white walls. I'm going to change the light out in here because it's pretty awful. <laughs> you can see now that it is quite yellow and just dim in here. Once the ceiling and the walls are done, I'm going to shift focus to the floor and put in laminate flooring in here. As I mentioned, I got it for next to nothing. I did have to pay for the underlayment. I'll go more into that later on. But yeah, I'm going to have some proper floors in here and not this cement that just, every time you step on it, it breaks down a little bit more. And so it just makes so much dust. And then last thing is to just build the furnishings. So I've got a week, <laughs> this is the plan. So let's get this done. First step up, painting the ceilings.
is horrible in here. Okay, so ceilings are done. Walls are started. Um, I did run out of paint. Um, so I need to buy some more, but I'm happy with how far I got actually, because the paint that I used was actually left over from the other room. So, um, I knew I was going to run it at some point and have to go buy some more. I just needed to use it all up. So I would know how big of a container I would need to buy, if that makes sense. Now, in the meantime, but before I buy some paint, I'm going to install the lights. So when I did the first room, I knew I was going to eventually have to fix the lighting in this room. So I did already buy these. I thought it might be interesting for you guys to know how much this whole renovation cost me. Um, so I'm gonna have to look up how much these cost because it's been a few months since I bought these. Yeah, these are just, uh, they're called wet room. Uh, wet room <laughs> lights, I guess. Basically, they're lights that you could use for outdoors or your garage. Um, I just bought them because they're cheap. And the most important thing about them is that they are natural light. So they are a certain, what are they called? It's like a color neutral light. So it's not warm, it's not cold. It's supposed to be as similar to sunlight as possible. And that's what I definitely recommend for a studio because you need to actually be able to see your work clearly. <laughs> Look how much lighter it is in this room. This is insane. This room looks so completely different. I was a little worried about putting in dark floors, but with the walls and the ceiling and the lamps that I have, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. <laughs> the walls before we do the floors. So this is a very exciting moment because I'm going to paint the yellow. So probably this is something that you've never noticed, but I've always noticed and I always found it very annoying and ugly, this gray um, doorway. Um, it's made out of metal. And you know, this door is really cheap, but I'm not gonna do anything with the door. I think that the thing that bothers me most about this is the gray, because I just think it looks like a basement. And I wanted to put a little bit of sunshine in here. So I went to the store yesterday and I got this. 
Uh, I had to ask and she said this would work for metal. So we'll see. It's a water-based paint and I don't know, this is what it's called. Let's see, I hope it's not as yellow as this. This is a little bit intense, but I could always add some white to it, I suppose. Oh my God, this is like kindergarten yellow. Let's do a coat and we can see how it dries. So I already sanded it, um, just to rough up the surface a little bit. Hopefully it sticks. Okay, this is looking awful, but I'm hoping that it's just a matter of a few layers. I'm gonna go ahead and try. I'm gonna trust the process on this one. Okay, so it's Saturday morning. I know it doesn't look like it because these lights make it a time warp. <laughs> uh, perpetual day in these lights. Um, last night I put a poll on my Instagram to ask whether or not this yellow looked like sunshine yellow or it looked like McDonald's clown yellow. And y'all voted. <laughs> and I'm officially at the fuck it stage of this yellow. So before I even got the results of that poll, I just painted it completely over in white um because uh, the yellow is just too yellow it's too primary it's almost like icky you know it needs to be diluted so so i'm here first thing in the morning because we're going to go on some errands and i need to decide if i'm going to pick up some more paint in a different color um this is the moral of the story, is that you never buy the pre-mixed paints that are just available on the shelves. Always choose a paint from the chart and get that mixed up for yourself because it's too much. So what I'm gonna do, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but they're both water-based, so I think it's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna mix the white for the walls in with this yellow, and I'm hoping it's gonna do something okay. So let's try it. <laughs> So let's take this as a learning experience. Some of you might know that I actually have dabbled in a lot of different things before finding my way to pottery. Um, when I first went to university, I was actually studying to be a painter. Anyway, the primary rule of painting and the biggest issue that I see most novice painters using is to never, ever, ever use paint straight out of the bottle. To me, that's just going to destroy your painting because the color is like so weak, it's so washy, and it's so simple. Like the best colors are colors that are complicated, that have multiple colors in them. So what do we think? Do we love it or do we hate it? Honestly, it's good enough for me. It's giving me Easter right now. Whatever, it's gonna be fine. because then it won't be like, so wow, yellow. The more I look at it, the more I like it. <laughs> so we've moved on to the flooring. <laughs> I'm not going to explain this part in full detail because I do already have a whole to like putting down flooring tutorial um, from when I did the main studio room. So if you want to learn about installing laminate flooring, definitely check that out. But um, yeah, so the basics though is that we install the underlayment, which is this foam stuff, and then uh, the laminate right on top. This underlayment part is not cheap and I kind of went for the good stuff. This is a centimeter thick, which is fairly thick for underlayment, but because we're in the basement, 
Um, I wanted to have that insulation because um, you lose warm air really quickly down here. And I'm hoping that I actually save money in the end because this is supposed to be, you know, more insulation so you have lower heating costs. Not that I have heating in this room. <laughs> but yeah, um, the underlayment is honestly my favorite part of renovating. <laughs> Laying this out and cutting this, it just goes really quickly. It's really satisfying. And um, yeah, but I do think I'm gonna have to run to the shop because I'm running out of this tape. Ah, it's annoying because this tape comes with and then they just don't even supply enough. Yeah, so I'm gonna see how far I can get with this tape and then I'll probably run to the store. We're done. Well, we're not done. We have finished installing the flooring. All that's left is the trim. And if you have watched my other videos about renovating the main studio room, you know that this is where I struggled. Like everything else was easy, a lot of work, fine, easy. I'm worried about this. I'm nervous about this, but it is a different system. It's kind of like a, I don't know, it came with the floorboards. It's kind of like click, click, click. So I'm hoping it's easier. We'll see. So I definitely don't have enough. Um, but oh my God, guys, I almost forgot to tell you, I had exactly the amount of floorboards I needed to finish this room. There was like, you probably saw that I was struggling a little bit on the last couple pieces because I was using floorboards that were like slightly broken. Like, I guess they broke a little bit as they were disassembled. She said that they were for like a 15 square meter room. This room I believe is 13 square meters. So I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna fit. It's gonna fit. It was getting very tight at the end. Of course, they're pre-cut already to fit that other room. So not every piece fits 100% fully in here. I literally use every single one of those that click in on three sides, every single one. That was really lucky because I have no idea what I would have otherwise done. Um, but anyway, for the trim, I definitely don't have enough, but I think it's gonna be fine because I, I'm gonna put shelves all along this one wall here and I'm gonna trim it just so like, you know, stuff doesn't get in, but I can just get a different trim. Like, you're not gonna notice at all. I could even paint it white so it could like match with the wall. We're gonna try and install these. They look fairly straightforward, but you know what? The other one did too, so let's see how this goes.
so it is 5.30. I've been at this for a while, and honestly, I've hated every second of <laughs> doing this fucking trim. It's definitely going better than the last one, but um, I don't understand how anyone can install this trim with seamless lines. I don't get it. Every time you put something together like this, you need a filler, don't you? Like to fill in like the tiny little airs. No one's gonna be doing this perfectly. I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe I'm just making excuses for my own incompetence, but these little guys make a huge difference and I'm glad to be in using this system instead of the system I used in the other room. Um, but I ran out of trim and so I did luckily save this piece from the other room and it works. And excuse me, I'm trying to make a video. The less you interrupt me, the faster I finish. <laughs> anyway, it actually fits surprisingly well, but I don't even care because this is going to be behind some shelves. So basically all the trim is here for is to seal off the gap. Um, you always need to leave a gap around your laminate flooring because um, of expansion and contraction. I don't know if I'm going to do this, but I'm thinking I might just paint the trim white to match the walls um, to, so that I can fill the gaps. But also, I have a pretty major gap. So, <laughs> I have regrets. <laughs> I should have started on the other side. So this side is the side where there's going to be a bunch of shelves and you're not gonna see the floor. And on that side is where I'm gonna have my table and my kiln. And I should have started on that side because you're gonna see the floor way more on that side. You'll never see the floor behind the shelves. Well, I started on this side. And so this side looks perfect. That side, I had to cut a bunch of boards to fit like the floorboards. And because the wall is not perfectly square, there's a gap. <laughs> Basically, I needed to cut the board at an angle and I screwed up and the gap is too big for the trim to actually cover it. So I do have quite a big gap. So what I can do to disguise this is I can fill it with um, caulk. I'll just fill it up with caulk and and then I can just paint over it the same as I paint the trim and it'll pretty much make it vanish, I think. It's not in a area that's going to get foot traffic and honestly, it might even be covered by the table. I'm not sure, you might not be able to see it, but I do just wanna fill the hole so I don't have dust building up in there and anything. I want this to be all seamed up well. So if I do that, that's gonna add another day to this build and it is currently Sunday. I'm supposed to have this video go live on Wednesday. That's my plan, according to my plan. You know, things can always change. According to my plan, I'm supposed to have it go live on Wednesday, which means I need to edit on Tuesday, which means my last day I can work on this is tomorrow, which means I would need to go to the store, paint cock, and also install everything tomorrow. And I don't think that that's physically possible in one day. That's my update. I think I'm just gonna like try and blast through this last section and pray to the Lord that I never have to do floor trim ever again. Testing, testing, testing. So, funny story. Last time you saw me, it was Sunday evening and I was installing the floor trim. I thought it wasn't going to take too long and I was hoping that it would go smoothly. And I was rushing to finish the room because it was supposed to be today's video. So today is now Wednesday. Um, but that evening, I couldn't even walk. So I do have a slightly weak back. It's not so bad, it doesn't um, limit my life too much, but it does get sore from time to time. And that was like the sorest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> like I literally couldn't walk for a little while. I had to just like lay flat on the ground for about an hour. Um, so it was in that moment while I was laying on the ground contemplating my decisions that I decided that I would say, 
fuck it, I'm not going to get this video done in time for Wednesday upload, I need a day off. It was all the bending over, you know, I was basically working on the floors for, I think, yeah, three days I was working on the floors. And so this video will go up in a week from today, but today, so for you guys last week, I quickly <laughs> filmed like a Q and A as a replacement video because um, I didn't want to leave you guys with nothing. I knew I would have time to do it. I just basically wanted some time off of this room. So now it is a couple of days later and I'm saying we need to finish this room. Also, I am in a little bit of a rush again because I have a collection launch in like a week and a half and I need to get this room functioning again so I can fire the pottery. All the pottery is already made, it's drying, but some of it's ready to be fired now. So I need to finish basically. So my goal is to finish the construction of this room by the end of the day. And then tomorrow I can load everything in and do my firing. So let me show you what, the, what I need to do. So what I want to do is fill the gaps with this stuff. This is like caulk. And um, so I'm going to tape off the floor. And I can use this to fill in that gap. So let's get to fucking work. So it's the next day and we finished. <laughs> so I stayed up late last night. I came in quite late to do the last layer and I think it's okay. One thing I forgot to install was the little transition thing. So I'm going to do that today, but first I need to clear all this stuff out and get the kiln back in here because I have to fire today. <laughs> Well guys, we finished the kiln room and I gotta say, I am so happy with the space. I actually did my first firing yesterday, so it is now fully functional. <laughs> so I ended up using some old shelves to rest the clay on. And I did this just so that the clay could get off the floor. I thought it would help with things like the clay not freezing and dust buildup and just generally like looking a little bit tidier. The clay has an official spot and it's not just going to be flung on the ground. So one thing that I'm really proud of is that almost everything in this room is secondhand or stuff that I had already. So all of the shelves, including the shelves that the clay is resting on, that's old stuff from my old studio in Berlin that I brought with me. The table top and the table legs are actually from two separate people that I found on eBay Kleinenzeigen. So this is actually just an Ikea tabletop. I had these in my old studio and I really like these just because, you know, they're sealed and they're really easy to keep clean. And I like the white, not only because it helps bounce the light around, but you also see the messes on it so you can wipe it up. And then these table legs are pretty crazy. They are so stable 
like way more stable than they need to be. Um, but I think they were like 15 bucks or something like that. So that was a steal. And then the flooring, of course, was also secondhand. So I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I believe I spent 10 bucks on this flooring as well as all of the trim. So that's pretty cool. I do like the flooring. I will tell you though, that I already see the dirt and footprints on this flooring. So if you're going to do this yourself, if you can get a lighter color, um, it will just look a little bit nicer like for maintenance and stuff. I think the dark wood looks really great for like somewhere in your apartment, but for a studio with all this like powdered stuff, all of the mess is going to show. So I will say that I don't regret it though, because I did get such a good deal on this flooring and it did fit perfectly in here. And look at all this space. I got so much more space that I can add to my glazing collection now. So I'm really excited to be doing that. I'm going to have so much storage space and I really feel like this is a space that I can grow into. So I told you I would tell you how much everything cost altogether, how much I spent on this project. And here it is, here's the cost breakdown. So the most expensive items were definitely the lamps, the paint, and the underlayment. Everything else was just details. So keep in mind, I'm not including the things that I already had, like screws, and obviously all of the tools I didn't add to this list. So for me, it ended up being pretty cheap. It might be more or less for you, depending on what sort of resources you have. Really what I encourage you to do is if you know you are going to have a renovation project coming up, start looking for used materials online if you have like somewhere to store them in the meantime. I stored that laminate in my basement for like a couple of months before I knew I'd get around to doing it because I was just keeping my eye out for good deals and that's how I scored these good ones. So I hope that you liked that. I hope that that was helpful for you. Um, let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments or if you have any suggestions for future videos. I'm all ears. So otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.